we're trying to figure out how we can get this job done today. We talked to Mitch about it earlier. He, uh, he's not in the room right now, but he was with us earlier uh, and said, you know, we want to expedite this and hopefully they could confine it to just one complaint to Arizona and then we could vote and, and it would be, you know, then just move forward with the rest of the state. And the overriding wish is to do it at the Capitol. What we are being told very directly is it's going to take days for the Capitol to be okay again. During the January 6th insurrection, as the violent mob stormed and ransacked the Capitol, it was then Speaker Nancy Pelosi who took charge, making calls to the vice president and other leaders to bring in the National Guard and quell the riot. You know, what the president should have been doing. Fast forward to today, and the House Republican Conference is now in the process of possibly elevating a congressman to the speakership who Liz Cheney herself said partially bears responsibility for what happened that day. Extraordinary. Joining me now is House Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi. Speaker Emerita Pelosi, thank you so much for being here. It's always a pleasure. pleasure. When thank I go you. back and I watch that footage of you that day, it is a reminder that the speaker is second in line to the presidency. And when you had a president who was refusing to be president, and you had a vice president who was hiding and fearing for his life. It was the speaker who had to take charge, and you did that. The idea that the person in that position, if something catastrophic were to happen to the Capitol again, would be an insurrectionist, somebody who was on the side of the insurrectionists, I can't wrap my mind around it fully, and I wonder what you make of it. Well, first, let me say, Chuck Schumer, we were there together. Yes. Uh, together, calling the president, asking him, really beseeching him to send the National Guard, talking to the then Secretary of Defense and asking him and the Secretary of the Army, McCarthy was his name, to send, they, and they just weren't doing it. And then they lie about it. That's yeah. their thing. And uh, again, and Mitch McConnell was even with us on taking it back to the Capitol. Right. And taking it back to the Capitol. So these, uh, these House Republicans were just, they didn't have any interest in the peaceful transfer of power. They were in denial about the election. And for all the horror of that day, the violence, the desecration of the Capitol, this temple of democracy in the world, the violation of our Constitution to yeah. have that day being the acceptance of the Electoral College vote. The whole thing, the assault on our democracy, after we went back to the Capitol, took the vote, yeah. overwhelmingly, the Republicans voted against accepting the results of the Electoral College. Yeah. And this person that they're putting forth to be Speaker of the House, it's just appalling. And he, today, he was asked, do you accept the results of the election? He wouldn't answer that question today. No. I've walked through that Capitol with you, mm -hmm. and I can see how much you revere that building, yeah. how much you look around and feel the awe of it and the awe of your position. There's nothing in that in this person. Liz Cheney literally called him out by name as somebody who, in her view, was involved in the plot to overturn the election. Have any Republicans come to you privately and said, we understand, Ken Buck has said it publicly, we cannot elevate somebody who does not accept the results of the election and who was part of the insurrection. Mm -hmm. He said he can't do it. Have any Republicans come to you privately and said, this cannot happen and we won't let it happen? No, but, uh, but the fact is, is that the Republic, uh, Mr. Jordan and his friends do a real disservice to their members on the Republican side to call upon them once, maybe more, we'll see tomorrow, to vote for such a person for speaker. They're going to have to answer to their conscience, uh, to their children, to their own legacy for doing something so disreputable. Now, for some of them, it's a good match. Some yeah. of them are just right in there with them. But for some of them, you could just see this has to be very painful for them. Uh, the uh, We're rather thinking we don't agonize, we organize. Mm -hmm. We have to get going for the next election. Just think of how recent it was when uh, Kevin had 15 votes to become speaker. It was 
what, 10 months ago. Yeah. Well, in that period of time, pretty soon, we'll have Hakeem Jeffries, and we'll be voting for him very proudly for what he's doing for the people, honoring the oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. They are for the people and not uh, just a person this other person that they're nominating, Jordan, doesn't have any legislation, not a legislator, Nothing. never passed a legislation. His big bill is to criminalize a, 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 a woman's right to choose with no exceptions, right. with no exceptions, the harshest possible position. Uh, again, not accepting the results of the election. But voting, again, you just see these people voting for him when he voted against disaster assistance, when fires came to their area, yeah. when storms and hurricanes and and um, just, well, that's why you see some people voting against him from yeah. New York. But there are many others who are voting against the interest of their constituents because you know why? The instigator of Trump. the insurrection, yeah. Donald Trump yeah. has asked them to. Has told them to. Let me play yeah. what uh, another former speaker, John Boehner, uh, had to say about Jim Jordan. Um, here he is. You call some of these members political terrorists. Oh, yeah. Jim Jordan especially. My colleague from Ohio. And I, I just never saw a guy who spent more time tearing things apart and uh, never building anything, never putting anything together. Kevin McCarthy, uh, with the exact same majority uh, that you had, and you were able to be very effective as speaker with that majority, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't accomplish a thing other than get himself ousted when he was speaker. What would the House of Representatives look like with somebody who John Boehner has called a political terrorist in charge? What would happen? Are we going to have a government shutdown? Like, what happens? Well, let me just say, first of all, I had a majority of two. Three, uh, there were five, yeah. and then there were four, then there That's were three, right. and then there were then it was two. two. Yeah. So it was uh, a, a very, uh, even slimmer majority than what they have. But the, uh, the let's, let's just take it to the public. President, Clinton, uh, President Lincoln said, public sentiment is everything. With it, you can accomplish almost anything. Without it, practically nothing. Yeah. The public has to understand what is at stake. Our democracy is at stake. What have the Republicans accomplished at all, even when they had a president in the White House from time to time? An enormous tax cut for the super rich and That's corporations. It. 83% of the benefits went to the top 1%, and it added $2 trillion to the national debt. It did. They give that kind of a break to the top 1%, while they take 30% of food from the mouths of babies. They take 80% from the Title I education for children in poor economic economic uh, uh, de deprived areas, uh, they take, well, the list goes on and yeah. on. And you know what? Just about every one of them voted every way that way. Yeah. Now, some of them have said this is a bridge too far right. for our democracy. And uh, we respect differences of opinion. Sure. That's our democracy. We w welcome the fray, the conversation, the debate. That it, it, It's not a question of I don't like what you believe, yeah. so therefore uh, you're not right. No, that's your right. You yeah. represent your district, and that's it. But if you're not honoring the oath of office, if you don't respect our democracy, that is a that is a, a, a line that yeah. cannot be crossed. Uh, and well said. I, I want to give you an opportunity, since I, I have you here. I'm lucky enough to have you here to let you comment on what is happening in Israel. The president is on his way there. Yeah. He will now not be meeting with uh, the leaders of Jordan and Egypt, et cetera, because of that hospital bombing. Your yeah. thoughts on what's happening? Well, the, the president of the United States has been excellent. I mean, just, just think, well, I, I'm very proud of his domestic agenda, but globally, he brought NATO together. In fact, NATO is stronger, despite what Putin thought would happen. He brought people together, listening to countries together, not condescending, America wants this. Let's work together on how we can fight for democracy in Ukraine and help the Ukrainians, and God bless them mm -hmm. for their courage. And with Israel, I love when somebody said the other day, nobody wrote that speech for him. Israel is our friend in the region, a shared values, a national security interest of us, ours in the vet. And so uh, he, he has given his full support, as do I, uh, to Israel in this. 
What Hamas did was outside the circle of civilized human behavior. What they did was barbaric, but it was barbaric. And people said, well, they did it because of this. No, they did it. Mm -hmm. It was barbaric. Now, uh, I have confidence in the people of Israel. I always tell the story of um, when I was there, a speaker, mm -hmm. I went to visit a hospital there, right. and they told me they had just treated mm -hmm. a Palestinian mm -hmm. uh, uh, who had d done violence right, there. Right. And they said, we treated the mm -hmm. Jewish person and the Palestinian the same. Mm -hmm. We didn't treat the Palestinian mm -hmm because he was Jewish, right. we treated him well because we're Jewish. And I believe that overwhelmingly the people of Israel don't want to see mm -hmm. children and women and families disrupted, but war is war, mm -hmm. and the Hamas must pay a price for this. I'll just tell you, my... Oh, we, I would, oh, we have to go? I, oh, I, I, to go. What I'll do, I'll have that, to let you I talk to me, Amber, because we are on a time I crunch. I'd rather <laughs> talk about Israel than, than Jordan. <laughs> than Jim the Jordan. Country, uh, no, the yeah. person. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, anyway, let's speak. pray for uh, that... that uh, uh, Life will be valued as precious yeah, indeed. all over. Indeed. Well said. Speaker Emeritus Nancy Pelosi. Thank, Thank you. you, as always. We're back. <laughs> oh, I thought we got...